What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. So I thought I would just give a quick update as far as what I got done to the D100 in this last week. So first, as you can see, I have a windshield. Um, so I know I referenced that in the previous video. Uh, from the time that I went online and found a company, they were here in like two or three days. So they came out Monday, got the glass installed. I think it took them, what, an hour? Second, you can see the hood is back on the truck. That was a process. Let's just put it that way. Doing it by myself, that was, uh, well, here, watch.
That was sketchy, even for me. Third, uh, I've still been dealing with some dash electrical gauge issues. Um, I finally, so let me back up here. Um, so my fuel gauge and my temp gauge stopped working. Uh, so, which was really weird. They both kind of went out at the same time, but the oil pressure gauge still functioned, which was really weird. There's a voltage limiter on the back of the dash that takes the 12 volts, knocks it down to five, and that's what powers those gauges. So, like I said, the oil pressure gauge worked just fine, but the fuel gauge and the temp gauge quit working. I can't explain it. So, first thing I did, uh, I actually installed an autometer gauge, fuel gauge, and hooked that up. That didn't work either, even though that's a completely standalone gauge, runs off the 12 volts, doesn't plug into the dash at all. I teed the the fuel level sensor signal off the dash to that gauge, nothing. So I decided to, maybe, uh, so maybe I have a bad sender that could be possibly if it's shorted, might be affecting the other gauge, but not the other, I don't know. So I ended up, I decided to pull the level, the fuel level sender, which meant I cut a hole in the bed rather than try to remove the bed or drop the tank, which all that now is a little more difficult because of the bumper that I, or the, the tow hitch that I built and the roll pan, those are some difficult uh, things to try to do now. So I decided, well, I'll cut a hole in the bed, which works out because now I have an access panel that if I ever need to get to that sending unit again, or if I ever need to like pump the tank, do whatever, I can now just pull this panel out and get to the sending unit. So I took all my measurements, centered up on the, where I was pretty sure the sending unit was, cut like a 12 by 12 hole, pop the panel out and there's the sending unit. So to make that panel removable, I took some, uh, just some, I'm not sure what gauge, it might've been like 18 gauge sheet metal, cut some strips out of it and then I actually, actually used my bead roller to kind of bead the same ribbed detail in the bed on the top and bottom piece and then on the sides I just tack welded it all together just some spot welds and then I added some self-tapping screws all around the perimeter and that holds it in place. When it comes to making this panel um, like I said I used my bead roller to create the rib detail but when it came to the holes for 
uh, spot welding, I got it one of those Rockwood uh, hole punch flange tools, pneumatic, pneumatic tools. That thing was incredible. I wasn't sure if it was gonna punch through this thicker, I think I said, I think it's 18 gauge steel. I wasn't sure if that was really gonna punch holes in this for spot welding, but that thing was amazing. I mean, it punched through it like it was nothing. So yeah, I highly recommend getting a Rockwood, Rockwood uh, air punch tool. I'll leave a link down below. But back to the sending unit. Um, so I pulled the sending unit out and what I did was I just lifted the float all the way to the full position, turned the truck on, and my gauge was working. I still had fuel in there. I put, I put a piece of fuel line down inside, and I had probably, I don't know, a couple of inches in the bottom of the tank. So my first thought was, well, great, maybe the float isn't floating, which, I mean, I, that would be, you know, maybe it had a hole in it. I mean, it is a remanufactured unit, but... Thought maybe the float wasn't floating and that was indicating why the why the uh fuel gauge wasn't working so i decided to drive this thing down to the gas station and i just filled it up 25 gallons ish about for that ram charger tank and when i went to leave the station turn the truck on fuel gauge came all the way up to full okay so that works um so i got home i started playing around with temp gauges i have a couple of them on the bench over here and I swapped one out for another one, turned the truck on since it was still hot, and the temp gauge came up to more normal. In the process, I had also swapped out different uh, voltage limiters. So apparently I've got a combination now that works. Whatever. I call it a win. Um, now I need to deal with the speedometer. So in my drive to the gas station, my speedometer was just kind of all over the place. I had already installed a new cable. So I pulled the cable out, lubed that thing up. I haven't had a chance to drive it since then. Um, so hopefully that will help, but I think it's the pickup, the magnetic pickup on the back of the speedometer. I was kind of turning it by hand and that needle would, it would work and then not work and not. And it just seems like there's some play and maybe one of the bushings in there. I did lube it all up, but it seems like there might be a little bit of play. I may have to look into to getting a hold of a new speedometer. Um, what else? So I'm, I got to work on the speedometer. So yeah, I think that's really about it for this week. It's been been kind of a slow week. Probably the biggest issue was troubleshooting the gauges and working on on all that. So I think I'm gonna going to. Uh, cut this video off here and I'm going to head out to the pick apart, see if I can find a speedometer. There was a 76 or 77 D100 down there that I've gotten a couple of parts off of, but I'm, I don't think the dash is in really good condition. Uh, I believe cause th the roof is crushed in. Um, but I may hopefully be able to get a speedometer for that. I'm also going to see what other, what other little odds and ends I need to get for this thing. I've got a whole list of like pick apart shopping list. So hopefully I can get some parts there. So like I said, I think that's pretty much it for this week. I do have some other issues that I am contemplating trying to work out. Um, one being the shifting of the transmission. I'll probably get into that next video, but thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe, hit the bell. And I'll catch you on the next one.